As we've seen in Ken Burns' Jackie Robinson documentary, number 42 is famous for being the baseball player who broke the game's color barrier. But off the field, Jackie Robinson also became a civil rights leader who aligned himself with the Republican Party. That was until the 1964 election season, where the rise of Senator Barry Goldwater caused him some serious concern. In a recent article for The Atlantic titled, When Jackie Robinson Confronted a Trump-Like Candidate, Arizona State University professor Matthew Delmont tells this lesser-known story of race, politics, and identity that may indeed resonate with this year's election. Professor, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So let me ask you to set the stage for this conversation by describing this, this idea of Jackie Robinson, what his politics were, and why he was politically affiliated, because many people might find this surprising in this day and age, with the Republican Party back then. Yeah, so when Jackie Robinson retired from baseball at the end of the 1950s, he had a newspaper column. Um, and he started to use that newspaper column initially to talk about sports, but then eventually he started speaking out about politics. Um, he first becomes identified with the Republican Party in the 1960 election when he campaigns for uh, the then Republican candidate Richard Nixon. Um, Nixon ends up losing uh, to President Kennedy, but Robinson remains politically active. He identifies both as an independent, but then eventually as publicly as a Republican. Um, and as the 64 election campaign gets underway, he becomes increasingly concerned with uh, the rise of Barry Goldwater, particularly the kind of extremist political rhetoric that he sees coming out of Goldwater in the Republican campaign. And he uses his newspaper column, Jackie Robinson did, to really argue against Goldwater's candidacy, uh, both out of a fear for what that could do for the Republican Party, but also mm -hmm. what that could do for America. Now, and I'll get to that in one second, because I think it's fascinating, the positions that were taken. But again, to better understand this and, and the contrast between then and now, um, describe for us what the Republican Party was like in, in let's say, 1956 with, with Dwight Eisenhower in 1960 when Richard Nixon ran but lost for the presidency in terms of black voters who aligned with the Republican Party. So in the 1950s, Republicans had a significant component of black voters. Uh, President Eisenhower received 36% of the black vote, and Richard Nixon, even when he lost, received 32% of the black vote. Part of that had to do with the legacy of Republicans being the party of Lincoln, uh, resonating strongly with black voters. And the other thing had to do with um, Democrats in the South were staunchly segregationist, so a lot of African Americans could not support the Democrats as a party, even if they were voting for someone like FDR or Truman nationally. Um, when Robinson starts to affiliate himself with the Republican Party in the 1950s, he's admires what Eisenhower was able to do by passing the 1957 Civil Rights Bill, um, and also his support for what was going on in Little Rock. So um, whereas today it's very unusual to see African Americans publicly supporting the Republican Party, that was not that unusual in the 1950s. So let's talk about then the 1964 election, the rise of Barry Goldwater. He, he was somewhat of a surprise candidate, at least initially. Tell us a little bit about how that happened, and then let's go back to talking about why it was that Jackie Robinson became concerned. So Goldwater comes from uh, Arizona, uh, he's the center of Arizona. It's a, a draft Goldwater movement that emerges to try to run a staunchly conservative candidate, partly in response to where the Democrats are moving with regards to civil rights. So Goldwater is one of the senators who speaks out against the Civil Rights Act in 1964. Um, and he is able to draw enough Republican support to win the nomination, uh, partly on the theory that they needed someone who was going to present a strong contrast to uh, first President Kennedy, but then Lyndon Johnson. Um, when he wins the nomination, it really splinters the party. Um, Goldwater ends up losing in 64, but it leads to a conservative resurgence within the Republican Party. There was a, a fear amongst Republicans, and, and I think this was articulated by Jackie Robinson and others, that if, if the Republican Party allowed Barry Goldwater to be the candidate and followed him in the direction that Jackie Robinson feared he would go, that it could well be the death knell of the Republican Party. How did that play out? So I think it played out in two ways. Uh, after Goldwater loses, the Republican Party does have a resurgence. They have a committed set of grassroots activists who are able to elect President Nixon, President Reagan, and lead really the whole country to the right. So it's a success story from that regard if you're supporting conservative politics. From Robinson's perspective, as an African-American voter, he was really concerned because that movement to the right came at the expense of the Republicans trying to court black voters. So for African-American voters, it essentially became a one-party system nationally, that only the Democrats were seriously contending for black votes. That worried Jackie Robinson. He thought why, did, if, why did that worry? Because that, that sounds a little bit surprising. When I was reading your article, I thought, well, I, I, you would assume that an African-American would say, if we have a very strong one party, and let's say it's going to be the Democratic Party, that'd be good for us. But he was concerned about the absence of of African-American strength in both parties, or presence in both parties. Why? He thought 
African Americans needed a two-party system to be able to leverage the two parties against each other, to make both parties compete seriously for African American votes and African American interests. Um, and I think what he was concerned about with the one-party system is partly come to, come to bear that you see Democratic candidates talking a lot about what they're going to do for black voters when they're on the campaign trail, but there's not a mechanism once, Af once Democrats are elected to hold those politicians accountable to African American voters. And that is really what Jackie Robinson was worried about with the one-party system. You know, we've often seen uh, celebrities using their platforms to align themselves with different political parties or causes, but generally speaking, we, we don't see as much of that among sports figures. Indeed, there have been criticisms leveled at many sports figures because of that. But Jackie Robinson was, was not, not just able, but very willing to get involved in the, the political environment. Why do you think that was? I think he saw it as his calling. I mean, I think being the first person to integrate Major League Baseball, he had had a strong public stance as a public figure. And he carried that over into his uh, political career. So I think whereas today a lot of athletes are reticent to speak on anything other than sports, what they know best, I think for him sports had always been political. And when he retired as a baseball player, he wanted to maintain that position in public life. And it drew controversy. He was sometimes at odds with other black leaders, sometimes at odds with, with unions, different political parties. But he, he sort of took that on because he thought it was important to have a strong public persona uh, as an athlete but also as a, as a black voter. Well, it's a fascinating article and a fascinating conversation, Professor Matthew Delmont. Thanks for spending some time with us. We appreciate it. It was great talking to you.